to bring you out of that. And I'm going to tell you, it's the good things that held Israel more than the bad things. Only through the bad things could God get them to turn loose of the other. So don't look for an enemy that is going to bring you to famine and poverty. Look for an enemy that will bring you into to well-being and to wealth and into having. He will hold you in a world that's not your home. This, whole, this, world is in, this world is an interruption of purpose. That's all that it is. And God's purpose is to deliver you from this world. By the indwelling of His life to bring you out. Look at 2 Corinthians 5, 18. 2 Corinthians 5, 18. All things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. That reconciliation means a return to divine favor. And it's not just saying, okay, you're saved, and I can love you again. No, it's saying, I'm bringing you back to where the flow as the purity of the priesthood is once again a condition through which the position can be restored and flow can be resumed. That's divine favor. Not a matter of, okay, I'm marked, someday I'll go to heaven. I will speak to that in one moment, two moments. This is a matter of who your life expresses. And it's always, the garden has always been this, always, this is the question. The two trees are the two lives. And the choice is which one will you express. In Romans 8, 5 it said, those that are of the choose the flesh are of the flesh. They that choose the things of the spirit, they are of the spirit. God doesn't mince words and he doesn't confuse. Now here's the, here's where our objection comes. And I'm speaking of all. Here's where our objection comes. We object to these things because we've yet to make the adjustment. We have yet to make the adjustment that Mary had to make that this life is not primary. It's God in me that's primary. And that when we object to the things that God asks us for, it's because we failed to make the adjustment that Mary made. We failed to make the adjustment that Jesus made. We failed to make the adjustment that Paul made. Paul said in Ephesians, the third chapter, he said, For this cause I bow my knee. We fail to make the adjustment because we're willing to serve God to a point. We're willing, we're, we're willing to, to give. We're even willing to sacrifice. But we will not turn loose of the throne. This life continues to be primary. In Romans 8 and 9, God said that in the flesh it's impossible to please God, but you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of Christ is in you. If He's not in you, you're not in His. So God's saying to us in Romans 8 and 9, He said, I'm going to tell you something. If Christ is in you, your spirit. I've made transition. Now it's up to you. In Matthew, the 13th chapter and the 44th verse, it said the kingdom of heaven is like a, like a man finding a treasure hidden in the field. And when he found that treasure, he went and sold all that he had and purchased the field. What I'm saying to you then uh, is that this, this being born of God and this being obtaining God's purpose has a great distance between we of the church have tried to make being born of God the purpose of God. Just accept Christ as your Savior. Make your decision for Jesus. Just, just, just sign the card. But we've lied to them because it's not about accepting Christ as a Savior. It's not about make your decision for Jesus. It's about who will you give your life to. Not just today. But tomorrow and forever. And understand it is progressive and accumulative. And it's not that we fail to be born again. It's we fail to progress. We fail to let God. Okay.
accumulate. Again, let me show you what I mean. The distance between born again and obtaining the kingdom is the difference between Christ and you and you and Christ. And that distance is the, the decision of whether or not I will sell all. Because if I don't sell all, I cannot buy the field. That's the cost. If I sell 50%, I don't meet the cost. This, there's no purchase. There's no transaction. If I sell 75%, there's no purchase. If I sell 95%, there's no purchase. Because I'm still making the decision to make this life primary. It cannot be. It cannot be. And we're talking about the difference in being effective or consequential in the last moments of time. This is the choice in every garden. Understanding that it's not the new birth, because before you were born again, you didn't, you weren't quickened and you couldn't discern two lives. But it's after you're born again and able to discern both, it's then that God says, now you must choose. And understand the effects of that expression are immediate, progressive, and accumulative in your life. And working in your life right now. Do you understand? Yes. This life of God works independent of you. Look at Romans, the 6th chapter and the 16th verse. Or this life, this force, be it whatever, works independently of you. 16th verse of 6 says, Know you not to them whom you yield? Doesn't say if you go out and commit robbery. It doesn't say if you go out and commit adultery. It doesn't say if you fornicate. It doesn't say if you kill. It doesn't say if you curse your mother. It says, who, which one are you yielding to? And it says, don't you know that the one that does yield to, you are servants to whom you obey. His servants to whom, uh, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. In other words, it's saying, whatever you're yielding to is taking you right where it's going. That doesn't mean, okay, you sin today, better uh, uh, not sin tomorrow because that's good. No, it says that you are moving in the direction of your last action, independent of your acts. And I'll show you how. Go to Ephesians. Ephesians 1, 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of His power to usward who believe according to the working of His mighty power? According to the working of His mighty power. Look with me uh, uh, in, in Ephesians 3 and 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Go with me to Philippians, the third chapter. And the 21st verse. Who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. This is talking about the life of God flowing in you, producing, re reproducing itself. Independent of you. It's not because you that you do good things that God works in this matter. It's not because you do bad things that hell works in its matter. It's because of the life you choose to express through obedience to that influence. You can be moral, ethical, religious. 